I'm going to ask uh, Tim and Kevin to come back up to talk a bit about the financial incentives that are uh, part of the program and about the community improvement plan, how that works. And then I, I'm going to talk for a few minutes about the other half of what we have got in funding. But first of all, Tim. The Heritage Conservation District Plan, you know, seemed to garner most of the attention through the process, uh, rightly or wrongly. And uh, it was the uh, the bride, so to speak, and this was the bridesmaid kind of helping and being there as the um, as the other piece of the pie. So, as um, as the experience from Markham indicated, you know, one of the key pieces of a successful plan is to have some sort of funding mechanism in there uh, to encourage and help move those Heritage Conservation District plans forward. So the CIP has been approved uh, since the same time as the Heritage Conservation District plan. Um, it hasn't uh, been advanced or promoted until today, actually today was a trigger for that to happen. Uh, and there's new brochures downstairs which I encourage you to pick up. Uh, and what I'll do is walk you through the plan now and, um, and talk to you about that. So brief agenda, what's the CIP, what did we put Cooks down and the objectives. Uh, where does it apply, which is probably the number one question I get for this. Uh, what's that process look like? Um, what are the financial incentive programs that are available? And uh, where do we go from here with respect to this supporting program? So what is the CIP? The, the boring definition is the tool under the Planning Act, uh, which basically allows the town to um, undertake certain activities to facilitate economic development. So uh, there are strict rules in place that you know, municipalities can't be bonusing or attracting or throwing money at certain users or certain things um, without some sort of strategic justification in place. So that's what a community improvement plan does. It allows us to improve lands and buildings, uh, allows us to even purchase those lands and buildings, allows us to undertake studies, and it um, offers financial incentives for, for people. And that diagram below basically shows you know, a new um, a new development, and again, it's too small. I apologize for that, but showing the different the different parts of where a community plan can apply to. So the establishment of bike lanes, uh, native trees and landscaping, uh, bike racks, all those sorts of things that make great places. Um, community plans, community plans can help incentivize. So what is the Cookstown CIP? And obviously, it's one that was developed specifically for Cookstown, uh, in parallel with the Heritage Conservation District uh, plan. Um, so, you know, where the HCD defines the vision, um, it's the CIP that helps implement that vision moving forward. And in this case, that's the beautification of Cookstown, that's strengthening our main streets, and that's stimulating investment. And those objectives, you know, no real surprises here. It's, you know, it's all those things that we, when we think of a nice place to visit, is what we want to have here and what we want to live in and be part of. So that's, you know, conserving and enhancing that historic character, you know, looking at commercial viability and tourism, uh, ensuring that pedestrians are safe, comfortable and, uh, and have good accessibility and creating that attractive and inviting public realm. And, you know, we talked about some of those things um, that the HCD is also trying to achieve and again the CIP is mirroring that, reflecting that process. So where does the CIP apply? So there's, there's, three, there's three key ingredients for this. So the purple line uh, that you see on the screen now, that's basically, well not basically, that is the settlement boundary for, um, for, the, for the village of Cookstown. So, what the town is saying, that, that purple line is for the town, so that purple line is saying that for town initiatives and for public monies that we're spending and for capital projects that we spend, you know, when we're inside those purple lines, um, there is a subset of the community improvement plan that tells us um, what we're going to do in there and the types of improvements we're going to focus on, and I'll touch on that a bit, a bit later. The, the second uh, piece of the puzzle is the hatched uh, area in the center. And there's an enlargement there in the top, and basically what that is doing is that's picking up all those commercial, for the most part, commercial buildings, uh, but certainly buildings that are fronting our main streets, uh, King and Church, um, and focusing the um, the amount of money that we have now on those, um, on the basis that will give us the best bang for a buck in terms of you know getting that main streets, getting those main streets healthy again, um, and creating those inviting public realms. So. That's the first. That's the second one. Sorry, and then the third one uh, applies to again this diagram that you saw earlier today. Um, any group A or B building uh, within the Heritage Conservation District. So there's the outside line that the town concerns itself with, with for all the public stuff. There's a hatched area for all those properties fronting the main streets, and this is the puzzle is the uh, group A and group B buildings um, because those are the ones that have those higher values of heritage. 
um, to build uh, or create um, a lot of that heritage character that we're trying to protect. Uh, and when we have limited uh, pools of money, um, the focus was trying to uh, instill that money or inject that money in those places where um, it would have the most effect on maintaining and promoting the heritage conservation district. So what is the process? Um, and you can see the main categories there, and you'll be able to see the small print again. Uh, but you know the, the four categories are plan, get approved, build, and get paid. It doesn't get much more simpler than that. So the planning part, like I mentioned this morning, is the sooner you talk to us, um, not that we're control freaks, all I'm saying is that the sooner you talk to us and the sooner we can start sharing ideas, um, the sooner that we can start guiding you on um, how to maximize the incentives, the incentives for your project. Um, we have a pre-application meeting where you input on those drawings, and input on drawings is better sooner than later in every case that I've come across. Um, in submitting the application, uh, the application form is in draft will be on the website uh, tomorrow or Tuesday. Again, a fairly simple and straightforward form uh, and no fees attached to do that to apply. Um, getting approved, uh, there, is a, there is a committee at town called ADAC. Um, it's a development advisory committee uh, that's been delegated the uh, power to consider the applications as they come in. Um, if it's approved, that's great. You sign the agreement, get on your way and get going. If it's not approved, well, that's not the end of it because, believe it or not, we don't like to say no. There's a lot of rumors out there that we do, um, but we do take no satisfaction in that. So, if there is, you know, if we can't support the application for whatever reason, then certainly the dialogue doesn't end there. You know, in fact, it, it begins again. And you know, what can we do to make that application successful? Because if we make that successful, you know, we get to spend the money and we get to see the impact on the community um, where it was intended to go, not to sit in an account uh, at town hall. Uh, building the project, uh, obviously, and you know, not just with this agreement, but I always like to underline for the sake of my fellow managers that you need all your other approvals as well. Uh, don't forget about those ones. Uh, and then getting paid. So you know, once you once the works are done, let us know. We come out, verify that everything was um, done as agreed to, uh, and then we issue that money as quickly as possible to um, to minimize the uh, to maximize, I guess, the benefit of that community improvement funding. So what are the financial incentives? So I encourage you, the, you know, the best answer I can give you would be um, with specifics. So um, after today, certainly um, my details, um, you know where to find me at the town. Uh, call me anytime and we can look at you know, specific proposals and, uh, and just see how we can maximize what monies may be available. So the first one and one of the most obvious ones is the facade uh, building and science improvement grant. Um, so these are the improvements to those building facades that have that big impact on heritage character. Um, architectural elements is part of that. Uh, windows, lighting, painting, etc. Et uh, so again, in the case of the building facade, um, it's up to $5,000 or 50% of the uh, eligible cost. Uh, for signage, that amounts a bit less, up to $2,000. So um, it's right the time. So at the moment, there's $35,000 sitting uh, in that pot uh, for people to come forward. Um, it doesn't sound like a lot of money, and it's, it's not a lot of money in this day and age. Um, I guess what it was, though, it was the first step to recognizing where we wanted to go. And the uptake has been slow, obviously, because um, it hasn't been heavily promoted. Um, I'd like to think that the uptake gets quicker from this point on, and um, I won't make any decisions on, for council right now. But, you know, if this is successful, then, you know, this is something that I think um, would be good. You know, there's validity in uh, funding this moving forward. Uh, particularly if it does the things that we're hoping that it achieve. Landscaping and property improvement grant. Uh, so this is improvement to sidewalk cafes, um, improvements to landscaping, fencing, walkways, and bike racks. Again, those things that impact on how we view the village um, and reinforce what we like about the village. Um, it also includes, in this case, the funding for professional landscape architecture services uh, to help people come up with designs that, that do that and achieve those things. And the dollar amount there, again, is um, up to $2,500 or 50% of the eligible cost. The Accessibility Improvement Grant, um, this is for improvements <coughs> to uh, probably be geared mostly towards the commercial side, um, just to increase access and allow more people to access those older commercial buildings, which uh, in many cases it's cost prohibitive to make those upgrades. Um, and it's at the expense of those that aren't easily able to navigate uh, some of those older buildings and steps. Uh, and again, there's a dollar value there of up to $2,500 or 50%. The Building Improvement Grant. Um, so this is, this is a similar thing to last time. This is, I guess, to help save those buildings. So 
you know, it's quite easy to say it's too expensive to bring it up to code. Um, when there's a change of use under the building code, there's a permitting process to ensure that building up to standard. Um, for older buildings, that can get expensive, and you know that's when the discussions arise. Well, we might as well tear it down. So the idea of this is to, you know, um, facilitate, I guess, those improvements to those buildings. You know, whether it be plumbing, electrical, or structural, um, required by the building code, and to offset that, and to minimize the chance of someone making that unfortunate decision to tear down what might be a contributing building to the district. Uh, the building card and planning application uh, rebate program, uh, this is to offset the cost of the permits um, for CIP projects. So um, when projects are initiated, quite often they'll, um, they'll always typically require a building uh, permit application fee. Uh, depending on if you can live with the zoning bylaw or not, you may need a planning application fee uh, for rezoning or minor variance. Uh, so again, this is to offset those costs and encourage people into compliance and to invest into these buildings and ultimately the district itself. And the last one, there's six, sorry. The last one is the, the town tax increment equivalent grant. So I'm not an accountant, so I will explain it as best I can. Um, and this one's a little bit different. And this is um, the uh, perception where people get penalized for investing into their properties because, because of the system that we're in, uh, with MPAC and market value assessment, uh, unfortunately, the more money you invest into a building, the more tax you have to pay on that building. So this applies to the town tax portion of the tax increase. So obviously we can't discount fees for the County of Simcoe or the school boards. Um, but what we can do is to offset the town portion of that tax increase moving forward. So there's a pre-tax rate or a pre-development tax rate on that property, a post-development tax rate. That increase in tax is basically offset for one to ten years. Um, with grants issued to that person on an annual basis to help uh, reduce that impact and not let that be a discouragement um, to people moving forward. As I mentioned before, inside the line or inside the, the settlement boundary of the town, um, there applies a streetscape, public realm, and trails improvement strategy, which is a mouthful, um, and I haven't even thought of an acronym yet for it. Um, so this, as I mentioned before, uh, looks to support and encourage those improvements for traffic calming, uh, for those pedestrian connections, accessibility, safety, comfort, and other public realm initiatives. And we know, you know, traffic right now is a major concern uh, in the village, and certainly this will help, um, hopefully help alleviate some of that and make some monies available for it and, um, and some support those initiatives. Um, and it's to articulate the need for capital project improvements too. So, you know, when the town's going through and looking at its capital project program, you know, the money that we're going to invest uh, across the town, uh, certainly there's some more guidance for the village um, and as I mentioned to you sooner, you know, some of those programs have moved up um, you know, because of some of the attention that the Heritage Conservation District has put on Cookstown, um, mostly in terms of sidewalk upgrades um, and street furniture and uh, tree replacement program. Um, so this plan helps um, guide the town itself when it's investing money uh, across the municipality and there's short, medium and long term actions in there. Um, depending on the size or complexity or the ultimate goal of, of some of those matters. So where to from here? Continue to promote. I think that might be a stretch actually, maybe just to promote um, and encourage CIP participation. Um, unfortunately, I've had to say no to uh, probably about, about half a dozen inquiries um, since May of last year um, when this came into play with the Air Conservation District. Um, I'd like to say yes more often, so I'm hoping that you know we can do that through uh, the education piece and spreading the word amongst the town and hopefully the brochures uh, and newsletters and those communication pieces that come out of today um, will help with that. Um, build on partnerships with the community like the chamber um, and all the help today and um, through the Heritage Committee as well um, and any other part um, with that and get the most bang for our buck uh, for everybody. Uh, monitoring the value for improvement. If there's some programs that aren't making sense or aren't being spent um, you know, how do we reallocate or readjust that program so that we do get a better success rate? And um, speaking of success, you know, the success of this is running out of grant money. So, you know, the sooner we do that, the better, because that means the money's in the community. Um, and then let's top that up as we go. So, thank you for your time.